Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 8 through 9. If your hand or your foot causes you downfall, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you downfall, well then gouge it out and throw it away. For it is better for you to enter life with one eye rather than two eyes to be thrown into hellfire. You know, history tells us scores of people who overcome severe physical disability to reach inspiring heights. Folks like quantum physicist Stephen Hawking or artist Joni Erickson Tata. And many of these folks' contributions to society have proven invaluable. In the days of Jesus, the disabled were considered outcast, possibly even demon-possessed. The religious leaders of Jesus' time were too concerned with their images to risk being identified or even defiled by the disabled. Interesting, it was the disabled who received healing from Jesus, both physically and the spiritually disabled. Image has always influenced human culture. And people are still preoccupied with projecting an image of themselves that is bigger than reality. And why are we so afraid to simply be ourselves? In a culture that preaches that image is everything, is it any wonder that so many people are afraid to admit that they need a savior? Some folks would rather go to hell with a good reputation than confess their sin and receive salvation. The problem with projecting a false image is that you're really living a lie. It promotes fear and it fosters anxiety because we never measure up to that image because it's not real. Even if people buy into that image, it's not because they love you for who you really are. They love your image. And I believe that the most prevalent form of idolatry in our culture today is our own worship of the images which we create of ourselves. See also Instagram. (laughs) Jesus looks past the exterior and he focuses on the inside. First, he chooses to love us despite our spiritual deformities. And then he offers to trade his righteousness for our corrupt flesh. He sees past our images and he accepts us, not just as we are, but as we will become once he has completed what he begins in us. No wonder his atonement is also known as his covering. He completes what our images could never accomplish. He covers the reality of our shame. We receive the covering of Jesus by first admitting our sin. That is, that you acknowledge the fact that you're not perfect. Perfection is God's standard, and it's impossible to attain by our own merit. And then next, you turn from your sin, and you turn to face Jesus. You know, Jesus and sin travel in opposite directions. And then we receive atonement for our sin, His free gift of eternal life. Simply pray, Lord, I believe that Jesus is the only way. I believe that He has died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sin. He has risen from the grave, and I believe He is alive, offering eternal life to me if I would turn from my sin and receive it. Lord, I am turning from my sin, and I am accepting His free gift of atonement. Now help me with my unbelief. Why spend your time and your resources building an image of perfection when Jesus offers the real thing for free? I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at www.groundworksministries.com.